In an unprecedented move among today's top social media companies, Elon Musk just open sourced Twitter's recommendation algorithm. What does it contain, and just how does Twitter determine what gets shown or hidden on its platform? And by open sourcing the algorithm, will we the community have more of a say of how it behaves? Let's dive in as we explore the intricacies of how Twitter works. Hey, welcome to Chaos Theory, a space where we find the signal and the noise in all that's happening in tech, AI, and life. I'm Alex, your resident chaos coordinator. If you like content like this, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon, and leave a comment below for what you'd like to see covered next. Now, let's begin. Elon Musk on March 31st announced to the world the open source release on GitHub of Twitter's recommendation algorithm. It's a rare moment in tech history because most companies, especially social media firms, like to keep these sort of things in-house and view the core algorithms that are powering these platforms, the secret sauce, and a competitive advantage. So what's inside it? Well, the first observation is that in Twitter, you belong to a cluster of similar profiles. What does that look like? Well, if you're a celebrity, you get grouped into a group of other celebrities and musical artists. If you're an athlete, whether it be in the NBA, NFL, soccer, MLB, you get grouped into a group of other athletes. If you're a news publication or a journalist, you get grouped into the other news. It's similar to other affinity categories. It's a fair question to ask though, how do these groupings get formed? A big part of that could be based off content that you publish or based off the organization or the name power that you already have. One thing to note about this though, is that Twitter starts applying a negative penalty if you start posting content that is out of network. Put another way, if you start deviating from the content that's inside your cluster, you might see your tweets not reach as many people. In some sense, this might make sense because if I'm engaging on another person's tweet and I'm not in their particular network, I might not want to have my networks to see the reply that I post. So for example, if I'm an NBA player and I really love cooking, my followers might not want to see me reply to the cooking channel because it's content outside of my normal domain. So interesting to see Twitter actually implement this. One other observation is that at Twitter, there are four groups of main users. Apparently, users are classified as either being Democrat, Republican, a power user, or in this case, even Elon Musk. This might go against some of what Elon publicly posted, in which he said that Twitter didn't artificially boost some of his tweets. But the fact that we see that there's a special user category called Elon makes you think otherwise. Diving deeper into it, we see that Twitter rewards certain actions on the platform. For instance, each like gets a 30x boost, each retweet a 20x, and each reply a 1x. So the takeaway is that it's much more impactful to earn likes and retweets than comments or replies, which is a little bit of a counterintuitive result because in my mind, if you have comments on your tweets, that shows more engagement than just a simple like or a retweet. But hey, the Twitter people obviously know a lot more than me. Here you can see the full list of what gets weighted or not. I'd pause if you want to take a deeper look. The other observation is that if your tweet has images or videos, you also get boosted. So make sure to include a photo of your favorite meme next time you post. The next observation is that you shouldn't just post links directly on your tweets. Links actually get marked as spam unless you actually have engagement on the tweets where you link content at. This makes sense because it's commonplace in other platforms where they don't want you to spam people with links that could potentially lead to bad content. It also emphasizes that Twitter wants to keep people on their platform and maximize the amount of time spent on the main Twitter app or website. So what we see here is that retweets, replies, and favorites, all measures of positive engagement, they help indicate to the Twitter algorithm that your post is not a spam. Especially here where it says that if your link is not a non-media or non-news link, then it could be more likely to be flagged as a piece of spam. There are also several negative actions that significantly hurt engagement. Mutes, blocks, unfollows, spam reports, and abuse reports all hurt overall engagement. So if you have those on your profile, that would definitely explain why your tweets are not showing up. So we can see here in terms of their negative features, these include the blocks, mutes, abuse reports, spam reports, and unfollows. One other piece that just got verified is that if you have Twitter Blue or Twitter's premium subscription service, your tweets will definitely go a lot farther. We see that if you're a Blue verified author, your tweets will get applied a multiplier effect. This multiplier will boost your reach and allow more people to see your tweets. One criticism to this though, is that it makes Twitter more of a pay to play platform, where if you don't pay the monthly subscription fee, your tweets might not get as far reach as someone else who does. From the competitive landscape, if you're a small business owner, this almost forces you to subscribe to Twitter Blue. Otherwise, you might lose out on reaching your audience. One other piece of intuitive insight is that misinformation and not safe for work or hateful speech are downraked on the platform. Twitter actually has several categories where they group under the safety label. This label includes things like content that specifically you don't want to amplify, content that might be coordinated harmful activity, 
content that might be an untrusted URL, or things that might be misleading or cause challenges to civic integrity. Medical misinformation is another key area that's called out. And one thing that's particularly interesting right now is that the current war in Ukraine has its own category. And as part of controlling the content on its platform, apparently Twitter can allow governments to intervene. Twitter has this intervention type where I imagine governments can request specific content to get highlighted or taken down on its platform. This might be particularly concerning because it shows that Twitter can be influenced by outside forces like government. And on this topic, apparently elections and special events can have undue influence on the platform. We see here several instances of elections or even the COVID-19 pandemic being featured here as specific safety label types. To me, this shows just how manual of a process updating Twitter's algorithm actually is. When special events that can literally happen overnight occur, Twitter can quickly manually add these safety types to change the course of information flowing on its platform. And some very basic things that are part of the algorithm is that you want to make sure that you actually spell your words correctly and not make words up. We see here that if you're using language that's not understandable, your tweets will actually get demoted. And this makes sense. You don't want to have your timeline filled with content that you can't even read. Now summing all this up, we see that the Twitter algorithm is really made up of three parts. We have positive engagement signals like likes, retweets, replies. We have negative engagement signals like mutes, unfollows, or spam reports. And we also have the influence of your follower graph, namely who follows you and engages with your content. All these features in aggregate, plus some manual intervention, make up Twitter's famous algorithm. And that's that for now. I'm sure that in the coming weeks, we'll find out even more of how Twitter works. If you want to make sure that you stay up to date with all this, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. And follow along with me on Twitter, LinkedIn, and subscribe to my free newsletter in the link below. And make sure to leave a comment below for what you'd like to see next. Until next time, this is Alex, your resident chaos coordinator.